Open SIPS installation. Just after the installation, we have to install the command line interface. Uh, actually, we have to configure. Then the database support, SN grep, and the control panel. So let's start. Here, I will do a preview. You have this view as a student. I'll put as an instructor. It's more or less the same thing. So to configure the Open SIPS command line interface. The command line interface is configured on this directory, on the tilde uh, slash dot open cli dot cfg, right? So let me open my server, uh, cd uh, tilde. I can do an s ls dash la, ls dash la, and I can see the files I have I have here. So. I have no uh, no configuration right now for the, for the OpenSIP CLI, so I'm going to use the vi dot OpenSIPs. Let me check again. Uh, OpenSIPs dash CLI dot CFG. OpenSIPs dash CLI dot CFG. Okay. Next, I'm going back there. Let me copy this content. Perfect. So let's move back here, insert, and OK. So this is default configuration for the OpenSIPS command line interface. And in this configuration, I have this prompt name, uh, prompt intro, empty line, the history file, the output size, output type, communication type, what's the FIFO file where it communicates with OpenSIPS and the domain that it's OpenSIPS.org. You can find the best documentation for OpenSIPS CLI is on the OpenSIPS CLI project, GitHub, OpenSIPS CLI. If we look, we have the project here. We have the installation, the options, and then the the description of what you have on the system. The modules also have ins specific instructions. So you're, if you're going to use the database, you can specify things on the, on the database module. Uh, this module supports some commands, but also has some parameters such as that database URL, admin URL, schema, schema path. Uh, so you can add things related to the database also on the OpenSIP CLI. So for each module, you have to check uh, what you need. As I'm going to use the default for the for the database, I'll keep in this in this way, right? So that's what we have for the OpenSIP CLI. Let's test it. So OpenSIP CLI. Okay, now we are in the CLI. <laughs> Uh, the command that we use most is mi, so I can do mi um, which that gives me which commands I have available, or mi ps that gives me the process of open sips. Uh, if I use mi and I use tab, I can auto complete to other commands here, right? So this is this is how the open sips CLI works. You have more commands here. If you don't have MI, you have all these commands, database, instance, MI, quit, set, TLS. There are several commands that you can have on this OpenSIPS CLI. On the, on the OpenSIPS bootcamp, we, do, we go in more detail in many of the options of the OpenSIPS CLI. Let me do a quit. Perfect. Next. The next lab, we're going to go to the database support. It's also a simple lab, an installation lab. So as instructor, we have to execute three commands. The first one is to install MariahDB server. For Debian, uh, if you want to install MySQL from Oracle, you have to follow the procedures from Oracle. Uh, Debian does not come with MySQL anymore. so. If you want to install, you have to go to, for a special procedure. The, the MySQL compatible database for, for Debian 10 is MariaDB. 
Okay, MariaDB installed. What else? Open SIP CLI create database. When you install MariaDB in this way, you what do you have here? You have the MariaDB installed on the loopback, so no one from outside from the internet can access, and it's not running with any password this time. If you prefer, you can change the administrator password. Uh, it would be wise to do it, but don't do it now because for the training, um, we are pushing comments without the, the password. So next, let's create the database. So I'm going to use OpenSIP CLI. Dash X is, I'm executing a comment directly from the command line. Database create OpenSIP, it will create. I could, could go to the CLI and send the comment uh, directly from the CLI, but I can send from the command line too. Provide URL for the database, MySQL dash slash slash local host. Create all tables, yes, A, all tables. Done. And now let's see if we have all tables created. So I'm going to use the MySQL command. Uh, I'm using MariaDB, but the command is still is totally compatible with MySQL, so you can use MySQL commands too. This MySQL-E executes the command directly in the command line. You don't need to get to the MySQL shell. So all the tables were created there. So the database is created. Now let's move to uh, SNGrep. I like to have SNGrep because I'm going to use... Uh, I'm going to capture packets on the on the system. It's very, very simple to install SNGrep. It's just apt install SNGrep. So let me do this. apt install SNGrep. Fairly easy. But there's a problem in SNGrep. If you do an SNGrep and you start to... Let me do an ask. Ah, okay. It's doing... Sometimes you have this lines not working correctly. I believe I, I already have VI. Let me ls-la vi.bash rc. Nope, that's funny. Usually you have to apply the following comments. Oh, I'm using VI, sorry. Uh, nano dot bash rc. Okay, usually what we need to do is to do an alias to get the any courses uh, in UTF-8. Maybe this was fixed in the last version. It's funny that that's in grab. Okay, control X, yes. So saved. SMGrep is now working. Uh, let me see. F2. So everything, all of the the border lines are working correctly. So no problem at all. Next, what we are going to to use. So this part of the Bash RC, it's was was done. 